Okay, cool. Hey, Nick, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Good, nice to meet you. Yeah, you as well. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Where are you located? Uh, I'm in Naples, Florida. How about you? Oh, right on. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, cool. How's Naples th today? Uh, it's been really sunny, uh, warm lately. <laughs> Good. Not as much rain as we usually get, um, but you know. Yeah, we're all going all through right. goofy. We're all going through goofy patterns right now in this country, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> doubt about it. <laughs> well, hey, it's great to meet you. And before we get into your work, and there, there's so many interesting things going on with you know being a product developer and an entrepreneur. But I want to begin everything with COVID. How did you survive the COVID time period? How did you get through it? And how did it change the way that you do things now? Um, wow, that was, uh, so that was actually when I started the company. Um, and I, you know, that I kind of had some time. I think everybody really had time to kind of rethink things and what they were doing and what was important to them you know, during that time. And uh, so for me, that was, okay, I've had this idea for a long time and I, you know, I, I, it's a problem that everybody has and I want to solve it. And so that was when I began kind of the deep dive on product development. And, uh, you know, that was the first time I had developed a product, so, you know, had to go from idea, conception, design to market. And then getting it out there is a whole nother story besides the actual just creation of the product too. So that was the beginning of the COVID experience for me. Yeah. So let's get to the root of exactly what you do. I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at career day. One of the kids looks up and says, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? Uh, I, I solve common problems with simple solutions. And that is in a simple product development process of uh you know doing just analyzing kind of the market of what exists um for me i think any product inspiration has to come from you know what is this problem that i'm solving and so there has to be something not just an idea of what would be cool but you know uh who 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 does this help and what problem is this solving in our daily lives that we're experiencing regularly and then combine that with, you know, how do I do that? So what did you want to be when you were in the third grade? I don't even remember what I wanted to be. I don't think anybody really knows what they really want to do when they're in third grade, to be honest with you. Um, uh, I, I always had a vast interest and curiosity in a number of different things. I did some experimenting with selling things uh, at a young age. Uh, that were my creations. Um, so I don't know. I just had a general curiosity for for the world. Um, I don't know. I guess maybe I wanted to be, you know, whatever my dad was at the time, a businessman or something like that. So talk to me about cord brick. What is it exactly? Yeah, so cord brick is a weighted cord holder. And so it keeps your phone charger from falling off your nightstand. And it's weighted with steel. And it's got this flexi silicone here. And so it's a two... Uh, two problem solving solutions. So it both holds cords and it's got different wrapping channels that also wrap cords. And so for the wrapping, it's kind of cool. It unwraps untangled every time as well. Oh, and wow. so when you take it to go, you just travel and boom. So you got enough weight to hold not just one, but several cords on a nightstand or on a desktop, kind of organize them, keep them together. Yeah. Uh, and then as well with your phone, you can even pop open these little wrapping channels right here and just grab your phone and stand it. Wow. Um, I'll grab another phone and demonstrate if you'd like me to. Sure. And uh, yeah, so it's got multiple uses kind of for your phone's charger okay. and cord and solves multiple problems there. And then also has bonus solutions for your phone. It can prop your phone up and you can set your phone on top of it. It just makes it a little bit easier to pick up. So it's just really handy to have around a desk, nightstand, kitchen countertop in the car. Anytime you got to travel with charger cords, everyone's got a phone these days. So perfect little uh, travel gift uh, for anybody. So talk to me a little bit about how this started for you, you know, coming up with these ideas and how this became you, the seeds. Where were you born and raised and how did these like in, 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 intuitive in, in like just this inventiveness that you have? Yeah, uh, well, I, for me, it took a little longer to kind of develop that uh, understanding that 
I am an entrepreneur and that is what I should be doing, whether it be this product or whatever comes afterwards. I have more products along this brand line on the way, um, you know, um, we hold your stuff, you know, that that's kind of our, our motto here. I've got different sort of holders and other things that uh, I'll be releasing in the, in the coming months. Um, prototypes of anyways, but it, it honestly, um, I think it's hard for anyone to figure out like what direction that they want to go. Uh, it really was for me. I I'm a very indecisive person. I'm a perfectionist. I, t I took career counseling multiple times, different uh, tests of that nature, just to kind of figure out like, okay, what am I supposed to be doing here? And, um, you know, it wasn't until I was, you know, went through a personal, uh, you know, change in my life where I stopped drinking at age 30, where I was, you know, really had to kind of look in the mirror and say, okay, am I being, you know, my real self? Like, who, who am I and what should I really be doing? And then, okay, how am I going to do that? And so then actually COVID, um, you know, as, as you mentioned at the beginning, kind of kickstarted me into that and uh, kind of gave me the, you know, the YOLO approach, you know, I mean, you got this idea, you know, it's, you think it could be really big, you know, be true to yourself and, and go do it. So it was a long process of self-discovery. Um, I've been sober from alcohol for over six years now. That's just part of my personal story and journey. Um, and I've just found a, a, you know, a tremendous change in myself since then, developed willpower that I didn't think I had. Um, you know, I, I was a kid that I was always, I didn't really, you know, I did okay in school, but I didn't put a lot of effort towards it. And I wasn't concerned with very high grades. Um, uh, not that I, you know, again, not that I didn't do all right. Um, but uh, kind of a lot of that was maybe my parents kind of kicking me in the butt to do a little better as well. Uh, and just, um, you know, so it was tough to get my interest uh, as a third grader, going back to that, you know, just having lots of attention, lots of energy. Um, you know, attention issues, uh, you know, being very uh, energetic and hyper. And I still kind of keep that energy in my current daily life as well with uh, this this entrepreneurial journey. And, you know, that, that's that been relatively beneficial for me. Um, yeah. People always notice that at different shows. And when I'm selling the product too, you know, they they immediately see the passion I have for, for this and my creation and sharing it with others. What's your favorite entrepreneur, favorite business success story? Honestly, there are so many different journeys. It's hard to pinpoint one. Um, I've, I've been on kind of a self-improvement journey um, myself this, uh, these last couple of years. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I read Steve Jobs' book and, uh, by Walter Isaacson, and I, and I just I really identified with his perfectionism and his passion for getting it right to his own standards and um uh you know also he one of his favorite sayings and and uh, uh things to live by was that you know the customer doesn't really know what they want you have to show them what they want for them to really see oh yeah this, this would be better yeah. um so I, I i appreciate that mindset uh because i think that there's so many individuals in the world and it, it the world would be better if everyone's ideas could be shared and the best ideas would win out. I'm I'm for elevating the individual um and uh you know sharing as many ideas to you know really pick the best one um as possible. So who's been kind of a hero for you in your life? My dad has been a huge hero for me. Lately, I think it's pretty hard to argue that Elon Musk has been a, a, a big cultural hero. Um, you know, whether or not people agree with, you know, what, what some may say about him, I, I think his ability to uh, delve into just the first principles of certain aspects of, you know, solving problems and then focusing a team's effort to achieve solutions that are economical uh, and investable to those problems has been the, one of the most remarkable things that I've ever seen. When I was a kid, I wondered, you know, who's today's Einstein? You know, why, they would talk about this Einstein guy. Okay, so smart. Who, who's, who's that today? I mean, guy's been, Elon's been able to create an electric car company, which, you know, 
there have been many attempts and failures at, um, and the, by far the most valuable car company in the world. And uh, then a, a, a rocket company, which no one even considered doing. Um, and so, uh, you know, now with the acquisition of, of Twitter, which in my opinion, uh, at least opened up the space in, in uh, where opinions can be shared and what opinions can be shared. Um, you know, these are huge contributions to, to our, to humanity at large. And I think any entrepreneur, um, you want to dream big. I mean, that's, that's inspiring to other people as well, uh, is to, to, that's one of the best parts about America is uh, having through sold at all these flea markets and different places that I've sold the amount of, uh, encouragement that I received from just complete strangers that said, you know, I want, I just want you to succeed. I love seeing the energy in individual entrepreneurs and sharing a great idea. You know, like people have said to me, I wish I had thought of your idea. I'm like, what can I say? You know, I mean, I wish I thought of lots of other people's ideas myself, yeah. but yeah. Um, you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta appreciate, I think the, um, the accomplishments of other people, whether or not you agree with lots of other aspects of how they're doing it or what's happened because of it or whatever. So you may have already answered this one, but if you can meet anybody alive on the planet right now and spend some time with them, who would it be? Yeah, it'd be hard to choose against Elon right now. Um, I listen to a lot of, uh, you know, different, different people. I think for me, maybe it would be uh, Jordan Peterson, just because he's a psychologist. And I, I think on my self-improvement journey, uh, it has been really helpful for me to listen to people explain how not just the you know how how you know how how the mind works in general, but um, really to get like specific dialed in advice on like you and your mind. I think if you understand yourself better, you can really help manage your actions and and decisions and life better. And so uh, for me, that would be the selfish reason is I would want to just continue to understand myself better. And he does a great job of explaining, I think, how the mind works um, and analyzing people and and the world. So obviously, there's a lot of motivation in these individuals you've talked about, from Elon to Steve Jobs. But what is that motivation for you? What drives you? What gets you going every day? I think as uh, the, the best way I can put it is, as part of the 12-step program that I started in with Alcoholics Anonymous, the 12th step of that is to share the mission with others. And, you know, I, I don't really know why it is uh, evolution or because God made it this way or whatever. But uh, we as humans seem to do better when we're sharing our wisdom and experience with others. And um, for me, uh, an extremely rewarding part so far has been the ability to go and talk to students at say FGCU, local university here in Southwest Florida and in the entrepreneurial school and see them line up afterwards to talk to me and hear the professor say, we haven't had a single guest have students waiting in line to talk to someone after, after the class besides you. It's your passion, your energy, and you're sharing your inspiration with others. others. And so um, I'll just quickly turn around and show you my shirt here. Um, the mission is to build something. And so as part of my recovery journey, um, I donate to a local charity here in Southwest Florida called St. Matt's and are uh, towards building and constructing housing for people in early recovery. Uh, and they, they manage folks in homelessness as well. Um, and then I also want to inspire people to go build something themselves, go create something, go you know share whatever you have with the world, put it out there. Who knows what will happen? It's been an incredible journey for me. It's been part of my recovery. Um, I've, already, I've inspired people, you know, that have told me so and possibly some that have not as well. So that's a, a driving motivation for me. It makes me feel good. And so that's why I do it. I, I, I feel like, you know, there's uh, uh, getting back to your original question, you know, again, why, as as Jordan Peterson says, uh, I think the way to achieve meaning in life is through taking on responsibility. And you could take on responsibility by creating a company and by going out and doing things that, um, you know, put some weight on your shoulders for the responsibility you have to others to uphold that. 
So of all the things that you've done and accomplished in your life, what are you the proudest of? It would, it would, I, before it would have been my, uh, my sobriety, but this, this is probably up there because, um, uh, I mean, my, my, I couldn't do this without my sobriety uh, from, from alcohol, let me first say. Um, but that, you know, now after three years of just working out, you know, 60, 70 hours a week or so, uh, weekends included, um, if you had told me that I would have had the willpower or, you know, acted like this before in my life, I just wouldn't have believed you simply. I, I would, I didn't think that that was something that would, um, energize me and that I would enjoy that as the way that I lived every day. And so it's just been a huge surprise to me to find out that actually working hard on something that I enjoy, you know, is, is enjoyable and it is for me. And, um, it just leads to benefits in every aspect of my life. So everyone out there has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you are the one in control. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Uh, say the first part of that question again, if you don't mind. Everyone has a perception of you out there, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you're the one running the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Oh, yeah. Well, um, it's funny. I listened to an interview of Mark Andreessen recently, and you know, one thing he said was, as an entrepreneur, you have to kind of have this outward, um, you know, this outward facing uh, view, you know, view from others of everything's great. You know, we're doing awesome. Like, there's no, you know, I've got everything under control, and, and you know, behind the scenes, it's uh, it's chaotic and. Um, you get told no a lot and you have to figure out what the right path is and just kind of beat your head against the wall before you uh, before you get there. So I think kind of behind the scenes, um, you know, the people closest to me do see a little bit of the, you know, the grit and the frustration and, you know, that not all the super happy days um, that, um, we like to share. I think everybody likes to share, you know, their successes. Um, online, on social media, and, and you know, with others as well. But it takes a lot of those really difficult days, so you know, to get to that point. So um, I'm someone now who is pretty self-aware, is pretty accepting of the the current moment. Um, I think I would let my head get me into the past or into the future about you know regrets or worries and be paralyzed before and now i just take action i just do something and control what i can control which is wisdom and you know and and encourage to do that and um you know that's just different than my mentality before and it's been really rewarding to behave that way just get out of the denial phase and into the acceptance phase and just move on after that so nick if anyone wants to pick up cord brick learn more about you anything pertaining to your world where can they go yeah please check us out at at cordbrick on any of the main social media channels you can go to our website cordbrick.com you can find us on amazon by searching cordbrick or weighted port holder or something like that um and yeah join our email list for a discount on our website right on nick i love the ingenuity thank you so much for your time today best of luck with everything thanks for having me thank you take care